from the streets of Miami to presenting at the Grammys. <laughs> Con el molito de Jennifer. Maybe now you understand. Mr. Worldwide. Red one. And the beautiful Jennifer Lopez. So as you know, each year at our conference, we welcome new inductees into the National Charter Schools Hall of Fame. This honor recognizes individuals or organizations who have been pioneers and have blazed the path for public charter schools. Some have launched incredible new schools or grown networks of them. Others have passed legislation to create charter schools or leveled the playing field upon which they stand. And yet others have made precious resources available to charter schools so that they can deliver on the dream. But all of them are dedicated a consider, have dedicated a considerable amount of time, energy, and passion for a movement that is improving America's public education. Hall of Fame inductees have all been nominated by you, members of the charter school community. Our intention with the Hall of Fame was not only to honor the work of the inductees, but to shine a spotlight on the incredible st strides that have been made, are being made, and can be made by each of us. Their good work reflects well on all of us. And hopefully, it will motivate many of you to push the limits of what's possible so that you too can stand on this stage one day. This year, our inductees are as, are as impressive as ever. Each is a tireless advocate for public charter schools. Their work has helped shape the landscape that allows us to grow and thrive. We're thrilled to present them with this honor, and we thank them. Our first inductee this year is Lisa Graham Keegan. Lisa has spent her career as a champion of education reform and in particular, a champion for charter schools. She has been a key player in national education policy over the past two decades. Thanks in large part to her leadership, Arizona became one of the first states to enact the public charter school law, a law that Lisa helped enact with broad bipartisan support. And today, Arizona is recognized as a leader for school choice and is ranked 13th out of 43 states in this year's charter school ranking by the National Alliance. That's right. Lisa launched her career as an education reformer in the early 90s as a representative of the Arizona State Legislature, where she served first as vice chair and later as chair of the House Education Committee. But where I give Lisa the most credit is for her work as the State Superintendent of Public Instruction in Arizona. Those of us who have worked in government know what a thankless job it is. Lisa was elected and then re-elected into this position, even though she was supportive of reforms that placed the interests of children ahead of the interests of the establishment. And this was at a time where we did not have many if any, advocacy organizations who dared to support candidates who broke the mold. Lisa is now the principal of the Keegan Company. She also serves on the board of the Arizona Charter Schools Association. And to most of us, she is one of the voices and faces behind National School Choice Week. And on a personal note, I have now known Lisa for a little over two decades when I first started working in the education reform field. She has always been relentlessly candid about her attitude towards work and life, and she has taught me personally that you can be a female in a leadership role and still wear cute shoes. <laughs> but most of all, we love Lisa because she has placed the best interest of children and families at the focus of her attention and is able to see past the political challenges to the bigger picture of what's possible. I am proud to call her a friend. Please help me congratulate Lisa, Lisa Graham Keegan. Schools are supposed to serve kids, 
not adults. Lisa understood that and has been working on that for the last 20 years. For me in my work, it is fundamentally important that everybody's in the room. I've never done anything that worked in terms of reform that didn't have a great coalition of both Republicans and Democrats, Latino leadership, African American leadership, traditional leadership in the community, everybody in, everybody together. Charter schools are important because they provide competition. They provide a path to improvement. Lisa was instrumental in putting charter schools into Arizona. It's now grown to about 14% or so of the kids in Arizona are in charter schools. And the top schools in the state are charter schools. I'm from Arizona. I ended up running for office and became the chairman of the Education Committee. I got to work with others, particularly in the Hispanic community, to write Arizona's charter school law in 1994. So Democrats had the Senate, Republicans had the House, I'm a Republican, Democrats were led by the Hispanic community. It was a great bill for all the right reasons. What it taught me very young is that what works is what works for everybody. Because of her leadership, we were able to get through the legislature and get the governor to sign off on a charter school legislation, which also led to the first Latino charter school in South Phoenix. We created the first state board of charter schools in the country where the job was to start these schools. And that was hugely different. Okay, you got another one? I then went to DC and worked on a national organization, worked with others who were trying to do this. And I really began to see my work as making sure that people knew what they were doing could do it. We opened up many more schools in low-income areas in Arizona at first than we did anywhere else because the demand was so much higher and because of the way we started the law. You know, Lisa has a depth of experience on a national level, obviously on a statewide level. Has been involved in the creation of charter school movements, politically involved at the highest levels at the White House. The country needs that kind of leadership. She's got a very deep compassion for children, for family, and for education. What I think I'm good at is not being afraid to open the door and not caring when people are angry that the door gets opened because I know who's standing behind me. And once the door is open, I just step aside. <laughs> and that's been a privilege. Thank you, Nina. Great shoes, ladies. I love this song of Katie Tungstall. And if you know the song, you know that she wrote that song to capture the moment that she saw a very iconic picture of Patti Smith on what we used to call a record album that many of us had in our dorms. It came out in 1975. And the rest of you will have to look it up on the internet. But I love this song because it captures the moment in life where you see somebody do something so perfectly well that you know this is what you want to spend the rest of your life making happen over and over again. You have to be part of that. And I know for sure that that thing that you have in your heart is the reason that you're here. And 20 some odd years ago, I suddenly saw. And I, and lots of others like me, saw you. And we didn't know you, and we didn't know exactly what you would do. We hadn't met you, but we thought we knew what you believed. And we thought you believed in the children that you would serve. And we knew if we could just set a door ajar enough, you guys would come rushing through. And you did. You can't imagine, I don't think, the incredible joy 20 years later 
to stand with a woman I've been working with um, and sharing shoe stories with for a couple decades. And to see all of you and to know, not only did you walk through that door, you walked through that door to open another door for the young people that you see in your hearts and in your minds and in your daily work. Because those tiny people have a future and a purpose unique to them, incredible, amazing, and you see that. So this award is mostly about you and the fact that I had the great privilege in my life to know that if I worked hard enough, you could do your work. And it's an incredible blessing to stand here and know that you do it and you've done it. And I continue to expect the very best of the people who walk through that door, just as you expect the very best of the children that you serve. So this award is about you, but apparently always, or also about me today, or always about me in my house anyway. Um, so I accept it, and with gratitude and joy, but on behalf of all of us who suddenly see and always believe. Thank you very, very much.